Big Wide Auch Air Rifle Guide. Base State Red Wolf Heritage Huben K1 at the shooting range. Steyr Pro X. Servus, thanks for dropping in. Yeah. Yeah. Servus, thanks for dropping in and welcome to today's video. Today I want to give you an overview over all Weirauch air rifles. I just want to talk about what is out there, uh, which gun works for whom and just talk, talk about each gun one after the other. For air pistols I will do this separately. So yeah, for everyone wanting a Weirauch air pistol uh, needs a little more patience, today is all about the rifles. You can see the different sections in the YouTube timeline below uh, the video, so you can jump to the parts you are interested in the most. And I'll just start with the first step and hope I can give you as much info as possible. If I forget something, I'm looking forward to the posts and comments from my viewers, my community, which will add missing information in the comments. I love how you guys are working with me every time. Um, I can't remember everything, even though I'm trying. Um, yeah, just comment below if I forgot something. Okay, I'll just start with a few standard terms. So, what does the K mean on Weihnachtsguns? I can't say if it is for carabiner, carbine, or kurz, short, um, but it, it is always a shorter version of the rifle. So, uh, for example, a Weirauch HW97KT is a Weirauch HW97 short version with a thumb hole stock. The T is for thumb hole stocks, uh, while some models have an S, which means the standard stock. Now, I'll start with the models from low to high numbers and uh, everything I'll say now is my personal opinion. Of course, you can have different opinions. Feel free to share them in the comments. Um, I'll give a few re uh, recommendations based on my experience over the last years. The, the same recommendations I give people when uh, consulting them via mail and, well, via until now, people were happy with it, so I think I'm not completely wrong with it. Okay, let's start with the HW30. HW30 M2. It's uh, the HW30 model with the regular trigger. And then there's the uh, HW30 S. I would recommend saving a little longer and go for the S. Um, since it has the match trigger record, which I think makes a huge difference. The same exists for the HW50. There's an M2 and an S version. I'd also recommend going for the sadly, well, or let's say understandably slightly more expensive S version with the better trigger. It's definitely worth it. The HW30 is very small and compact, but it is so, so good. It's one of my all-time favorite air guns across all brands and I'm super fond of it. Um, you see it here with a stock which costs many times the price of the HW30 itself. But yeah, I just love shooting it so I had the stock uh, customized to my size and form. The HW30S is a brake barrel spring piston rifle. Like I said, very compact and lightweight. Um, that's why smaller shooters, teenagers and women who may not have the power to use uh, the, the bigger, heavier guns or just don't want to torture themselves, uh, use this one a lot. If you are above 180 or 6 foot, uh, you, you may have some trouble shooting it since it is so compact. I am uh, 190 and I couldn't be bothered and, and shot it even if the butt plate wasn't placed perfectly on my shoulder. Yeah, but the, the super low recoil 
and the perfect balance between its mass and its power, it's yeah, just convinced me. Um, and so it's become one of my most favorite air rifles I, I know and own. I upgraded mine with some uh, air show tuning, a tuning trigger uh, and the tuning kit inside. You may have seen videos with the gun. It, it almost shoots like a PCP rifle with, with barely any recoil. It is, uh, it's the softest recoil of all air guns, air guns I know on the market. And uh, the precision, yeah, I wanted to do that separately later, but I'll just mix it in. Uh, it, it often comes up that this is a brake barrel and it can't be as precise as the like, continuous barrels like HW57, 77, 97. I just want to disagree. Um, myself, I'm shooting more precise with the HW30 than with a HW77 or 97, but that's on me. Um, that the HW77 and 97 are super precise guns has been proven in several uh, German championships and, and world championships in field target and hunter field target where they are often used. I'll get back to these later. To sum it up, save for the S model, at uh, Jabolo we didn't even list the M2 version because, yeah, we don't want anybody to buy it accidentally. Um, it's worth it to buy the S model with the match trigger record. Let's get to the next model, the HW50. The HW50 shoots similar to the HW30 in terms of uh, recoil and handling. It's just a bit larger. Shooters that are taller and want the gun to fit uh, to their bodies, <laughs> um, they should ditch the HW30 for the HW50. It is also a very lightweight gun. And like mentioned before, there is a M2 and an S. Please say for the S, it's worth it. Weirauch uh, air rifles are built for life and in a few years you will regret saving the 30, 50, I'm not sure what the difference is, dollars um, right now and, and you will miss the better trigger. Next model is the HW35. The number goes down again, but in terms of size and um, field of use, it is yeah the next uh, bigger air rifle in the HW break barrel series. HW35 probably the classic amongst air rifles. Every air gun shooter or every shooter in Germany that heard about this one air rifle uh, probably heard of the HW35. I'm guessing most hunters also love this air rifle the most. Um, it is the air rifle you could use for hunting if it was allowed in Germany. Um, but yeah, it's different in other countries. Um, it's a gun slightly bigger than the HW30 and 50 with a little more recoil. It uh, weighs 3.8 kilogram, which means it's also heavier. Um, but it has the advantage that if you want to shoot outside of Germany or if you are there, I uh, also have a lot of Austrian beers uh, which want a high power. Uh, then the mass versus power setup is better with the HW35 compared to a HW50, my personal opinion, and to a HW30 which has 11 joule max either way with the strong string. The HW35 has been produced in the hundreds of thousands. I own a model from 1950, so a really, really old model and it is still in mint condition. Everything original. The HW35 is an air rifle made for life. <clears throat> Just uh, put some oil on the stock two, three times a year to stop it from graying or drying um, and uh, protect the system with some corrosion protection and this gun will survive you, no matter how old you are. Mine is, uh, what's the year, uh, almost 75 years old, <laughs> a little older than I am and still in perfect condition. And yeah, I'll hand it down to my son somewhere. Next model is the HW80. The HW80 is Weirauch's air rifle with the potentially highest power. Um, it was developed as an upgrade for the HW35, uh, especially 
internationally for shooters that want more power. It, uh, it simply offers a higher power than the HW35. Like I said before, we are selling air show tuning kits and soon there will be an FAC kit. Um, uh, yeah, and there you get a good and controllable power of 18 to 20 joules. I know you can get the gun to 25 joules. I even shot it with 25 joules, but it really kicks your shoulder and hitting is pretty hard. That's, that's why I suggest to go down a few joules for better control. Um, somebody once told me power is nothing without control uh, because yeah, it just won't hit anything there. Um, but all shooters that want a stronger rifle outside of Germany, I can recommend the HW80 Vyro's strongest air rifle. It's built pretty similar to the HW35. There's even a new design, HW80SL. We have both versions at diabolo.de. So, yeah, you can decide what you love best. So, uh, yeah, HW80 is a ton of fun. Next is the HW85 Luxus, an ambidextrous air gun with a cheek piece for both sides, a rubber butt plate, and nice uh, fish skin chasing. Uh, and it should be should be part of every Vyro collection. Now for the last brake barrel model, the HW98. The HW98 is a gun you can use in competitions. Um, it's, it's ready for field target and hunter field target. Myself, I'm having problems shooting it, but I'm getting incredible results and spreads sent by you when you're shooting it. Um, I also shot with a very good HW98 at a competition, but it was still hard for me uh, that day the owner of it won. Uh, so yeah, an amazing air rifle with the big advantage that you can adjust the butt plate and the cheek piece to fit your body. From my point of view, taste the fur. My personal opinion is based on the looks. It is the most beautiful spring piston of all there are out there. Keep in mind that it has no iron sights, so you have to shoot this rifle with a scope. All other models I mentioned before have iron sights and can be shot without scope. That's of course an advantage for your overall costs when you just started shooting. Um, you can go for a HW30S for about 280 euro. That's uh, the beach model at Diablo right now, um, but it can change over time, of course. Um, but yeah, you can just start shooting and yeah, a gun for life. Now let's head over to spring piston rifles with a continuous barrel. I often get the question, are these more precise? I mentioned it before, my opinion, no. I know that competitions are basically shot with uh, continuous barrels exclusively, uh, but it's mostly because you can use larger scopes which are needed for field target, for example. Um, like this, you don't get into trouble when breaking the barrel and uh, yeah, when reaching the loading chamber under the scope and so on. Yeah. Everything else, all the fun competitions like silhouette shooting, hunter, field target, often are shot with brake barrels. So there are three different rifles with continuous barrel. HW57, size of a HW50 and basically shoots the same. A very cool hobby air rifle with a kind of western vibe to it. Um, of course you can shoot it with iron sights. Yeah, it just feels like these old underlever loaders you might know. Um, no clue what the correct name is. <laughs> um, it's super fun shooting this gun. It is uh, compact, it is relatively lightweight, different than the HW77 and 97, with which reach a bit over 4 kg. Um, HW77 and 97, if you want the exact differences, just search for HW77 versus HW97 on YouTube and you'll find uh, one of my videos explaining the differences in detail. In short, the HW77 is underlever, 
spring piston with iron sights, you can shoot it without using a scope. Um, normally, the cheek piece of the HW77 is a bit lower if you didn't get some special edition or, or a customized stock. Um, that's because you need a lower sideline when shooting iron sights. Um, different from the HW97, for example, where your sideline lies much higher for the scope. Just exaggerating a bit here. Um, otherwise, both systems are pretty similar. HW97 just forces you to mount a scope um, because there are no iron sights. There are a ton of different versions of the HW77 and 97. I mentioned it at the start, there are K versions or shorter versions, which um, are a bit more handy when shooting on the ground or lying. Um, it, it's great uh, then if the gun is not too long. Or at my own shooting spot, it's also pretty tight, so it's easier to handle for me if the gun is a bit shorter. With 7.5 joule, it doesn't make a difference precision-wise if the barrel is a bit shorter or longer. It's, it's not crucial here. <clears throat> a lot of shooters even say it's better to shoot the short version because the pellet leaves the barrel sooner and the chance to tilt the gun and blow the shot is lower. Like I said, there are K versions, shorter versions, then there's T versions, even combined with the K, it's the, the thumb hole stock. There are S versions with the regular stock. There are uh, stainless versions in, um, well, in, in, in silver, basically. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and there are uh, bronzed versions like mine here in, in black. You have lots of options on the market. Just look around and take what looks best to you. I'm, I'm sure you'll be happy with it. HW97, same as with the 77, lots of different versions. I reviewed a lot of them. Just check my YouTube channel or ergandi.de slash en and check the overview of air rifles. I think I have 130 or 140 airgun reviews online. That should be some food for you. Um, and I have more than 500 videos online, probably 100 to 150 vital themed, so there's more content than you can consume right away. <laughs> I can promise you that. <laughs> okay, um, this was a rough overview over the spring piston rifles. Now let's check out the PCP rifles. The differences and advantages or disadvantages spring piston versus PCP. Big advantage of spring pistons, you barely need any other equipment to get started. If you have iron sights, just put a pellet in and shoot. For a PCP, you at least need a pump, a, a bottle or a compressor to fill it with air. Plus, these models don't, mostly, no, they don't have iron sights, so you need a scope mount and a scope. The cost for PCP is just higher than for spring piston. The HW110 is a bit cheaper than the HW100. Um, if you want a bite of PCP, but you are not sure if the HW110 or HW100, um, search HW100 versus HW110 on YouTube, and you will find my video where I explain in detail what the similarities and differences are. It's a 10 to 15 minutes video alone, so it would be too much to do it here. But if you want to decide between these both, just watch the video. Again, you have higher initial costs with PCP. Um, what's a big advantage versus spring pistons, if it is one for you? Uh, you have a magazine. Uh, well, uh, there's always two of them in the box, but yeah, you have a magazine. Um, with uh, yeah, you can shoot faster. Um, there's no recoil, meaning it should be a lot easier for you to shoot precisely with a PCP than with a spring piston. And yeah, having no recoil just makes it a lot easier. There's also a regular HW110 and a shorter K version. There's a gray plywood 
version, which I like a lot. Um, and there's one with a black soft grip stock. Again, you can just go for the version that looks best to you. They are all shooting the same and uh, the short ones are as precise as the long ones with 7.5 joule. If you want to shoot open versions of these PCP guns, um, the barrel length should make a difference. Yeah. Um, the HW100 goes up to 50 joule and I'm confident to say that it will be more precise and easier to handle with the long barrel. While talking about short barrels, for people who want it super compact, the HW100 Bullpup is perfect. It's an extremely compact and controllable air gun, uh, which is, um, due to the center of gravity being closer to your body, um, very easy to handle and shoot. The system is the same HW100 system. It's just built super compact and lightweight. So the other way around, you are searching for something ultra light. I recommend HW30, HW50, HW57, or from the PCPs, the HW100 Bullpup. They have the best handling and are my recommendation if you search for something lightweight. You are searching a gun for life, so Vyro is a perfect choice. It doesn't matter if you care for them, they will survive you. Sure, on PCB guns you may need to change the rubble seals every 10 to 15 years maybe. Um, same goes for the cartridges, but the systems themselves are such a high quality, they will survive you. Your spring pistons may need no changes at all, maybe also a seal after many years. Um, I recommend keeping the barrel seal smooth with a drop of oil here and there so it, it just doesn't get uh, porous um, but that's regular material care you know from your everyday life products if you are searching for the spring piston you can make the strongest one hw80 or hw80 sl you want a competition rifle for hunter field target, field target and silhouette shooting, HW77, HW97 and HW98 are my recommendations. For the spring pistons we offer tuning kits to maximize your shooting experience. Um, from, the, from the spring to the spring guard it, it all fits 100% together, I can only recommend it. All rifles with the match trigger record can be equipped with a tuning trigger, which uh, reduces the trigger weight to around about a third um, yeah, for less tear shots and easier shooting. For everybody outside Germany or with a permit, um, there are export kits with 16 joule. For everybody shooting competitions with permit, this is a super interesting option. Same for my Austrian viewers or other countries with higher power limits. Uh, you can choose between the export version with 16 joule or the export version, uh, the FAC version with the maximum reasonable power that still feels good when shooting. I hope I could describe everything a bit. This was a rough overview of all Weidauch air rifles for you to get a first overview. Um, if the one or the other attracted you more, just search for it on YouTube or even on Google. Um, you should also find it there, the videos. And then you can get detailed information on the single models and you can watch shooting videos of them. Um, just see this video as a summary or overview and then get into details from there in my other videos. That's all from me. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I didn't forget anything, if otherwise just add further information if you think it belongs here. Thanks a lot for watching, see you next week, ciao, servus, sesagandi.